Okay, so it is a pleasure to introduce you uh, today this presentation about uh, gender and the STEM uh, by Maria Bustelo. And uh, this is not an usual topic in our FISC seminar, but this is a very relevant issue in society for science and in science. So I, I think that uh, today this will be a very good occasion to, to learn and uh, to think about this. So Maria Bustelo is Associate Professor in the Department of Political Science and Public Administration at the Complutense University in Madrid. She is director of the Master on Evaluation of Programs and Public Policies at the same university, and where she has also been delegate of the, of the management team as director for equality uh, during four years. And uh, in this, she's president, uh, she has been also president of the European Evaluation Society. She has actually many things in the CV, so I will just select uh, something to, to give you an idea of her profile. She was, so she's leading several uh, national and European projects. And uh, specifically, the projects that are related to the talk of today is uh, one is this uh, Supera Horizon 2020 project, uh, supporting and promotion of equality in research in academia. And there is also a national research project on, of, uh, on related topics. Um, she is and has been an expert member of several groups, like, for instance, the gender group Mesa de Genero of the Ministry of Science, Innovation and University, or international like the UN Women Global Evaluation Committee, or the high level expert group of the FP7, and also in Horizon 2020 and DG Research of the European Community. She also has a number of publications on the on the evaluation and gender policy, and uh, among these. Uh, there is the politics of feminist knowledge transfer, gender training, and gender expertise of 2016. So it is really a pleasure uh, to have you here, Maria, mm -hmm. and uh, just uh, leave you the Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Roberta, and thank you so much uh, to the Institute for this uh, invitation. Because I think it's it's uh, it's really a challenge also to um, to explain these uh, gender issues and gender um, policies and the need for for introducing these uh, uh, gender issues um, in uh, some academic fields uh, that we are not so used to, like uh, for example in social sciences that we have been working uh, for that for many for many years. So thank you very much because of um, uh, for that, this invitation and and uh, and of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you um, like a lot of information and uh, with the idea or really of, of of doing a kind of food for thought okay and and something that we can then uh, talk about. So, um, and that's the reason why I decided this title of uh, why do we need to problematize uh, this idea of gender and science and what can we do? Okay, so let me uh, go uh, and start with an example. And this is a very famous example. And, and this was, um, and it was, uh, as you can see from 2011, so that's quite a, a long time ago. And uh, this was um, when the first um, when the first airbags for the for the cars uh, were started to um, to be in place. Then, after uh, some analysis, they realized they discovered that the, there was a much higher relative mortality of women, um, and then we, we we started to ask about uh, uh, why, right? And um, I don't know if you have uh, uh, some kind of, of idea uh, about what can uh, what can uh, be concluded here, okay? Uh, but in any case, um, I can tell you, and, and I can introduce this. It had to be with the idea of the crash test dummies and uh, the fact that nobody had uh, realized that the dummies were not by default masculine dummies. Okay, so the, the dummies are the ones that are, you know, with these uh, uh, crash tests, okay? And um, it was just a simple um, idea, analysis, sex analysis, right? Uh, nobody, by default, 
the dummy was a masculine one. And of course, the, the, the type of the, uh, you know, the, the female uh, ph physique, it's a different one, okay? Um, but that was, I, I'm going to tell you something else because I knew about this research and I, and I knew about the, the, these test dummies and I, I, and I have always used this as, a, as, a, as an example because it's a very good example to explain the difference between the need to do sex analysis and gender analysis, right? Sex analysis in this case, it is because um, nobody realized that the dummies uh, should also have um, a, a, a prototype, a, a female prototype to, to really uh, see that, but also Understanding these uh, figures was the idea that the um, copilot co plays uh, in the car. It is the one of them is the most dangerous one, and and uh, this is a gender analysis. Who normally uh, goes into the copilot uh, seat in the in the um, in the car? And this is a gender analysis. Okay, this is something. Uh, that, which is related to gender, to gender stereotypes, right, and to gender roles, right. Uh, so, but I was try, I, I was using all the time this uh, this um, uh, this example. But in in January twenty um, uh, twenty before the pandemic, I was in the um, uh, city hall of Barcelona in Ayuntamiento in Barcelona, giving this uh, uh, training, high level training to uh, Carmena and uh, to uh, sorry to uh, Ada Colau and 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 then uh, the the people, the the major and 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 her uh, team. And then I was looking for some images, okay, in the internet for having a, like a nice presentation. And then I realized that all the dummies, I mean, I could not find uh, any uh, female dummies. I mean, and this was to, to, to 2020. So uh, most of them there they were in the left uh, column. And the only ones uh, that I could find as a, as a, a female, uh, dummy was, of course, the, the first one that you have uh, there, that is uh, the, the idea of being like a girl in the backside of the, of the, okay, of a family. And then this other, that it was just real, you know, you have that in, in, in Spanish, siniestra familia de crash test dummies esperando su turno. So it's represented only as a family and, and, a, and a female dummy. But those were the only ones. And then what I could uh, also realize, and we will talk about that, but there is this um, wonderful uh, project and website that you can check that is called Gendered Innovations uh, in Design. And this is um, made out of, uh, of um, a, from, um, organized from uh, Stanford University and is led by uh, Londa Schivinier, uh, a professor in Stanford. And it is quite well to, to try to promote uh, the science and, and sciences and, and, and uh, to introduce uh, in different uh, science and innovation the uh, gender perspective, right? So look at this. This was 2020. Of course, they are working on that. It was also the, the, the uh, article in 2011. They were talking also about this fatal uh, kind of uh, um, uh, problem. And this was because of course the airbags and both the airbags and the uh, belts, the car belts are not de designed for uh, women. So there was, a, when there is a, uh, an accident and um, a pregnant woman is involved, the mortality of the, or the, the fatal mortality is really, really high because of that. And they are working on that now. Okay, so let, let's think about, about how stubborn is this idea of the gender issues and, and how it is not so quickly integrated, right? Because this was almost 10 years one uh, after that. Okay, so that, that's, that's the example I wanted to, uh, to start uh, with. Let me see, because I don't know why. Okay, and of course we have, we are going to, a little bit um, uh, here, but we have all these unconscious biases, okay? There are some things, I'm going to, to tell some things, but maybe you will know about 
this um, article in 2000, uh, orchestrating impartiality. They they did these um, blind uh, auditions in uh, symphonic orchestras on on recruiting um, musicians, and they realized that if if they um, if they did the um, uh, auditions in a blind uh, way, it was uh, more um, uh, probable, probable, uh, probable to uh, recruit uh, women, female musicians. So they put this kind of, um, I don't know, like, I don't know how to say that in English, biombo, okay, so a kind of, of thing, yes, and, and uh, they were uh, doing that and they found uh, a statistical uh, differences uh, because they were already uh, uh, recruiting or um, evaluating better as some female musicians. But they did a third step, that it was put a carpet on the floor. Can you imagine why? And this was, uh, and it was be because of the uh, heels, right? And, uh, and the idea. So even if there was a, a kind of a blind uh, audition, just listening to the to the heels you know to the uh, uh, of women uh, musicians they was already developed this uh, unconscious bias so with the carpet there were more uh, significant uh, you know differences uh, about this of course we have uh, a lot of things on evaluation in uh, evaluation in in universities and we now have also uh, european data on that uh, and boring uh, has worked very much on that from Science Po and, and now Rotterdam University. And um, uh, we know that female teachers, female university teachers are uh, bad, more, more badly uh, evaluated by, uh, by students and especially by male students. So, so we know that there is a bias there. And, and um, uh, of course, there are some uh, experiments uh, already, and they are um, um, there. We'll talk later about the letters of recommendations, and um, for, and I and I will talk also later about personal recruitment and promotion. But let me give you a very good resource that is a very nice video uh, on recruitment and on gender and how to take uh, uh, take it into account. It is a role playing which is uh, done, it is in English, by the CERCA Institute uh, in, in Barcelona. And uh, it's a very good, uh, nice uh, um, uh, video that I recommend you very much uh, to see. Okay, it's a role playing about uh, recruiting uh, researchers in, uh, in a team. Um, of course, there is um, this idea that Research, I'm sorry because I, I have a typo there. Research is not gender neutral, right? And we know uh, there are many other uh, examples, you know, that heart attacks, uh, that's something very well known now, uh, that until very, um, uh, recent, um, until very recently, there was this idea that um, heart attacks were not identified in, in, in females. Right, so they they were because they were different, and all the tests, medical tests, and uh, everything were done only with uh, male males, right? Uh, but there are many other things. I also I have also there, and I of course I will will share that with you. Um, we have uh, you have that video that is also quite uh, quite long, so we are not going to see it, um, done by uh, by the city halls of, uh, of uh, Sweden. I mean, it's, they, they have this kind of, I cannot remember, institution. And they give some examples of how to mainstream uh, gender. And uh, the examples, one of the example is how they um, demonstrated that there's no removal uh, it was uh, done uh, with uh, biases toward uh, women, right? Because the, it, you can see that. I mean, it was uh, first removed for cars, for example, instead of for persons and for uh, children in the streets and all those things. Really interesting. But you can have, like, what I can recommend you is this wonderful book. Uh, it's not a, an academic book. It's a, more a kind of a um, uh, uh, mainstream, uh, written by Caroline uh, Caroline uh, Criado uh, Perez, 
um, uh, called Invisible Women, Bias in a World Designed for, for Men. And she's a journalist, but really she um, looked up at many, many uh, different um, uh, research on this and it's everything put to, the, together uh, there and it's and it's, it's a lot of fun uh, also to, to read it. So I strongly uh, recommend it. So what what is uh, what 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 happens right? What happens in 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 in, in science? What 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 happens um, uh, really? Um, and it is true that many times uh, we say that the problem is that what the image that we have all of us right um, into our imaginary right uh, is the the image of a male scientist right some, some, something someone like the, the one in the in the figure right uh, and also the idea that the science has been really endocentric so it has been for example this airbag thing or the heart attacks or whatever it's just you know that by default the norm is the a, you know the male, right? Um, so um, that's why we call that it's very uh, androcentric. And of course, we are also we will re we can reflect on that uh, um, uh, after um, a little bit uh, later. It's the idea of that the scientific excellence uh, model that we are we have at this moment is quite based on a, on a male uh, model. And we will talk about that uh, also, as I say, uh, uh, later. Uh, you also have a very nice video by uh, Internet Plus. It was uh, another, um, another uh, European project of Igar. Igar is uh, integrating gender analysis in research. And you have there a lot of um, examples and also examples differentiating between doing sex analysis and gender analysis and how to uh, integrate it. So uh, let's talk a little bit very, very uh, quickly about what, what are stereotypes and biases, right? And we can say that what they are really, they are shortcuts uh, with expectations about behavior that our brains uh, use to make decisions without accurate information. And we all uh, use these shortcuts to understand the world, to, you know, to understand what we, it is going uh, around. And these shortcuts, shortcuts as, as it is said there, have certain expectations about the behaviors, uh, you know, the behaviors that you can expect from, from people. And in this case, of course, we are going to expect different things from women than from uh, uh, men, right? So that's the idea of the gender stereotypes that they can be, you know, defined as preconceived ideas that arbitrarily assign women and men characteristics and roles determined and limited by uh, their gender. Um, unconscious biases uh, come from stereotypes about groups without contrasting information that generate expectations and behaviors. This idea that men are more intelligent, uh, women are, are more applied, uh, you, uh, you applied, this is of um, uh, applicadas so or more correct, okay? And they do their, uh, their, their, their jobs, right? We do our jobs. So there are all these um, um, ideas, okay, okay, of why, uh, of course, both gender stereotypes and unconscious biases, they, they really have a role, right? And, and we all of, all of us uh, use them. Um, uh, very quickly about what is uh, gender and, and especially this idea of, of differentiating between sex and gender, okay? Because when we refer to sex, we are referring to the biological uh, differences, okay? Of being a man and a woman. Of course, this is very contested now, but let's, let's uh, 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 keep on that, okay? And uh, then uh, we have gender, which is um, uh, socially constructed, okay, uh, about what is what it is about being a man or a woman, right? We have there the Simone de Beauvoir um, um, uh, say about one is not born a woman but becomes one. Um, of course, uh, we have to take into account socialization uh, because uh, socialization creates different differentiated gender roles. 
and I don't know if you have seen uh, this, uh, it's also in videos, if you look, is the this uh, research on baby eggs, and, and this was that they, um, a baby that they, uh, um, it was like a baby in pink and a baby in, um, in different colors that were identified, and not knowing they were given the babies to people, the saying this is a girl or this is a boy. And of course, the interaction with the babies, with the very small babies, were completely um, uh, different, right? So it, a socialization which starts very, very early, right? Um, of course, gender is also a relational kind of uh, concept. So it's it concerns the relationship between uh, women and men. And of course, we will see also power relations, right? Uh, of course, uh, this is the idea of the value that is given to difference. I mean, and for example, we can see that uh, male jobs are more valued than women jobs, and we have the wage, uh, wage uh, gap and all these things. And of course, this idea, um, I, I, I would start saying that gender inequality is a structural problem. So this means that it is reproduced in every uh, realm. So it's not only a sexual division of labor, but it is also reproduced in intim intimate relationships, in citizenship and in knowledge, okay? And we will uh, see that. And of, uh, and of course, it's also transversal. This is the idea that it, it deals with family, with work, with politics, with culture, with violence, with sexuality, with everything, right? Okay, so, what is the problem of gender equality in science? We have vertical and horizontal segregation. We will talk about this. We also have the a glass uh, ceiling, which is um, a phenomenon already described and, and, and that it has their indicators. And it has to do that even if we are uh, more uh, female students than in the academic career, then I will show you uh, later the, the typical scissors uh, graphic, right? So uh, there is a, like a top. I mean, uh, women cannot um, uh, be on the top. I mean, that's uh, things. And also this idea of the leaky pipeline. And it's the idea of the women falling from the academic career. At, at different uh, stages, okay? Of course, there are many differences between scientific fields, and but it's everywhere, okay? It's with more or, or less, but everywhere. Um, of course, uh, the idea is that the definition of gender roles in society are also reproduced in science and higher education and in all the activities that we have around higher education. So that, that would be teaching, but that it will be also research and it will be also transfer and management. And uh, that also, I mean, that also produced many stereotypes and unconscious biases in, in, in the procedures, practice and relationships of institutions. So this, these stereotypes and unconscious biases are reproduced many times unconsciously, frequently, most of the times un unconsciously, in what we, how we think, what we do, how we relate to each other, uh, the practices uh, in our institutions and, and everything. And of course this, and although we will not touch that, uh, but uh, we know that this produces uh, individual and institutional resistances, okay? to integrate gender. Uh, those are the things that we are really um, uh, working very much now uh, among gender experts in uh, gender policies and is to uh, understand, identify and understand the resistances that we have uh, on, on, uh, on that. This is the typical, uh, this is a typical um, a scissors uh, graphic uh, to understand the vertical segregation and is that you? You have that. This is uh, this comes from uh, she figures, 2018. That is the last one. Um, there is this. Uh, it's each every each uh, three years, and we have a uh, new um, uh, she figures, um, which uh, are from the European Commission from 2021. But we we only have a, a, an infographic that I will uh, show you uh, now. So then you have the one from uh, 2018 that mainly, as you see, they are data from, from 2016. 
But as you see, I mean, for arriving, this is the whole Europe, okay? The, the, uh, um, at the European level, this is although we have uh, students uh, and more female students, and even even we are almost at the doctoral level, okay? So is that uh, eight uh, is the doctoral level? Then immediately after that, it 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 started to differentiate, and then what we have in the full professors or full researchers kind of uh, thing, we have that difference, right? So uh, in, in it, and it goes, it goes, but it goes very slowly, much more slower than uh, it should be. Of course, we have, this is, uh, these are only some uh, data I have just to understand the idea of how important the horizontal segregation is. This, is, this was just uh, there were data from, from 2016, but just as an example, we had, for example, the, um, the, the Facultad de Educación, so the education area, uh, where we have 82% of female students, okay? And in the Facultad de Informática, so it's in, uh, in uh, um, uh, technology and uh, informatics, we have 15% and it is going down, okay, in, 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 uh, in, in students. Uh, so, so those are, the, um, of course, the, uh, the um, horizontal uh, segregation. Some ideas for you to know that now the, um, the statal agency um, um, has now all this information we, we have done, we have contributed from, from Supera. Supera is uh, in Supera. In the consortium, we have the uh, Unidad de Mujeres y Ciencia as part of the, of the ministry and for doing the gender equality plan of the Agencia Estatal de Investigación, so the, the national agency in Spain. So this is part of how they have started to, uh, to gather uh, data. And of course, uh, there is always um, okay uh, uh, the, su the successful rate for uh, for women uh, in uh, in, um, in in projects is always uh, lower than uh, men, and also for example that was when that was last year, and uh, to the to the Juan de la Cierva uh, grants. Uh, there was a big difference, okay? So there was a, a, a successful rate really much lower for female candidates. But uh, you can have that. I mean, there is now, uh, all these data are in the, okay, in the uh, agency. And this is what I wanted to show you, that this is the infographics from the shift figures to uh, uh, 2021. Uh, and as you can see, what they wanted to, uh, to say is that um, although we are almost, okay, the women are almost close to, to reaching gender uh, parity among doctoral graduates, then they are still underrepresented in technical uh, professions. But, okay, this is horizontal segregation. Also, um, uh, women um, work under more precarious contract than their male counterparts, and this is also new uh, data. Um, of course, they, uh, women are also at the represented at the highest level, level in academia because uh, although they are 42% of the whole academic uh, staff, then uh, in decision uh, making, they are only 23, 23.6, um, these are the rectors or directors of, of uh, centers, okay? So this is a, a big uh, difference. And of course, uh, this is what I, I was saying, that is not only in Spain, it's uh, all over Europe, the idea that women are less successful than men in assessing, in accessing research uh, funding. And uh, of course, the patents are, I don't know if you are involved in your institute with uh, patents, but the patents are uh, just terrible. Um, they are significantly uh, underrepresented among inventors or uh, patent um, uh, owners. So we have all this. Uh, as I said, you, you can have all this uh, data. So now, okay, let's, how we, uh, how do we do it? I mean, what, what can we do, right? So I'm going to pass all these different things and I'm going to tell you about examples, different examples of, of, uh, 
different recognitions or looking for uh, data and knowing and trying to do something about it. So uh, let me start with the, with the example of the recognition of the structural nature of gender equality, uh, of gender inequalities. I would like to talk a little bit about European gender and science uh, policies because I think it has been extremely important, uh, the push that the, the European Union and the European Commission has put uh, in this. Uh, it started with, uh, with the expert group on structural change uh, in 2011. The chair was Ines uh, Sanchez de Madariaga, at the time the, the director of the unit of uh, women and science in the uh, Ministry of Science in Spain. And they did all these, uh, all these uh, analyses. And it was, um, I mean, the starting point where the European Commission started to say that they wanted to promote gender structural change, okay, as such. And that is why in the abstract, I, 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 I put this idea of like the three different strategies, three different levels. It's uh, the first one, it fixed the women, the idea and fix the numbers, the idea that at, at the beginning, right, where are the women in science? Uh, where are they? What's the problem? And immediately all the, um, all the policies and the measures were focused on women. What can we do for women to be uh, to, to, to be and have a, a more presence in science. And then to say, okay, this is not enough. I mean, it, the problem the problem are not the women. I mean, the problem is not only women, right? And not uh, that. And that's where the second strategy that it would be fix the system or fix the institutions. I mean, the problems are not, I mean, women can have all these wonderful, uh, you know, uh, CVs or can have, you know, uh, wonderful ideas, be very good researchers, but the problem is not on them on themselves. The problem is in the system and in the institution and how uh, uh, this can be. And then it is very nice because I, I will explain on the, on the example I, I said and all the gender innovations I told you from Stanford and from um, uh, Linda uh, Londa Schiviner, it is about the idea of like the third strategy that would be uh, uh, fix the knowledge, fix the science. I mean, what we need to fix is not only, is not women, is not only the institutions and the systems, it is also about knowledge, about science. And that's that's what I um, I think it's, it's most uh, uh, important. Uh, so what I would like, this is, uh, sorry, I, I, I only left some uh, in Spanish because I realized that I have most of that in Spanish. I have translated most uh, of it. But just um, to say that this European structural change approach um, has been very important also from uh, FP6. Okay, we have um, had this structural change pro, uh, projects, like, for example, the super is one of that. Of course, it's a very uh, a small uh, share of the of the whole. Uh, uh, in this case, for example, Horizon 2020, but we have advanced quite a bit. And and for example, there are uh, some things I will show you now. For example, this, uh, idea of the of the care tool, uh, which is um, um, in the European Institute of Gender Equality, and it was a, a joint effort of this uh, AGE and the DG research. And, and it's to help universities and uh, research centers to do their uh, gender equality plans, okay? And of course, we're um, from the, from the uh, seven uh, uh, FP exposed uh, evaluation, um, I was called to that high level expert panel because they, I was expected to integrate the idea of gender. So it was really a, like a big step on that. And then we did also the, the interim uh, uh, evaluation of gender equality as a cross-cutting issue in, in Horizon 2020. And of course, maybe some of you know about the, the important work that the ERC have, has been doing uh, on trying to, um, to squeeze the numbers because it was at the beginning, it was really even in the starting grants and, and, and in, in, in all the areas, but especially in life sciences, it was really uh, a, a huge difference on, on success rates. And they have done a wonderful job, a wonderful job at the ERC. So 
Uh, this is just uh, very quickly. This is the GEAR tool. You can find it, as I say, in the in the IGA. Uh, this, uh, this is in Spanish, but because it's in in all the uh, in all the um, the languages. Okay, but this is like. It's like a step, uh, a step by step, you know, uh, uh, guide uh, for for helping uh, research centers and, and and universities to do the gender equality plans. This is what I wanted to say. This I, I did this a screenshot from uh, a presentation uh, that was made uh, last year, and this was only the possibility. It is not a possibility anymore. It is a requirement. You know that uh, Europe has this new requirement that all the applicants should have a gender equality plan in place. And if not, they will not be eligible for any uh, uh, project. So this is like the, the way to really um, make everyone uh, do these gender uh, equality plans. Of course, there are many other things. And this, this is idea of fostering a union of equality, but I can tell you that is really um, um, uh, is really an issue, and it's uh, nice to know that uh, the European Commission is really pushing uh, for it. Okay, the second one, uh, example of recogni recognitions of stereotypes. Uh, here, I will take you. Um, I will have, and of course, this this works a little bit uh, better in uh, in Spanish, but I hope that you can. Uh, uh, most of you can uh, okay can follow that uh, because, for example, have you ever um, uh, heard, for example, that when when someone, for example, when a when a man when a when a father right is very involved in the in the with with children, um, he's normally called padrazo. This is a padrazo, okay? A padrazo is a very nice uh, father really working for that. Have you ever heard about someone calling a mother a madraza? Oh, this is a madraza, okay? I just want you to, uh, to, to put this example. Or this idea of considering the involvement of men in caring uh, children like an aid, right? like an extra uh, something uh, to do that. Or uh, for example, and let me use also other inequalities in intersectionality, for example, and this is not only in Spain, for example, I know about Denmark, right? In Denmark, if you are gay, right? And you go to the doctor to say whatever, you know, you have whatever, the first thing they do is to um, send to you a, a test on, on sexual uh, transmitted uh, uh, diseases, right? By default, because you are gay, okay? So it's the idea of, of not considering uh, the idea of health policies and behaviors versus at risk uh, uh, groups, right? Anyway, let's go to the to the uh, second one. Example of so, uh, biases I already told you about the symphonic uh, gender, um, and uh, then we like sorry because it was a, it was a screenshot and it was in Spanish, but this is famous already famous um, experiment done by Mosk uh, Raskusin and uh, et al. in 2012. Probably you have heard about this. And they did this blind, um, this blind um, like recruitment. So I mean, it was an experiment. So they sent the, this was for for um, for recruiting a lab manager in a in a lab, and and they uh, sent exactly the same uh, CV uh, to some people with uh, with the name of John uh, or with the name of Jennifer. Okay, and it happened to be that the the significant difference not, were not only that John was much more selected in all the cases, but he was offered a higher salary, okay, than Jennifer. And it was exactly the same CV. So this this was, this is a famous um, uh, kind of uh, um, thing. Okay, third, uh, uh, third um, issue. Uh, I mean, uh, the idea of the need for um, keeping the training on gender and uh, expertise we really need gender expertise about people helping us to um to see where the gender uh, issues are it is not enough with being sensitized okay and i'm going to 
to give you an example, and, and, and by the way, I will tell you about this other famous uh, uh, article on the letters of recommendation in the United States. And um, I will tell this example in, in first person. Um, I knew this, uh, okay, I knew this uh, article because it was uh, released on 2003 by Trix and Pensa. And they did uh, this comparison on, on uh, recommendation letters for female candidates and for male candidates for uh, in, um, in, in uh, um, North American universities. And they uh, concluded that the, that the uh, letters re written for women they were shorter in length and incomplete. They included gender terms. So they were referring to women, lady, mother, wife. They include fewer standout adjectives, uh, like for example, excellent, outstanding. It was more the idea of hardworking women, okay? Instead of excellent and outstanding. They include doubt races, like for example, negative uh, language, hedges, unexplained comments, uh, faint phrase and irrelevancies. They focus on interpersonal attributes versus research skills and achievements and include personal information that was not relevant to the position. Okay, this was uh, the, the, the thing. Okay, I, you know, um, in 2015, so I was already, I was asked by a Canadian uh, colleague if I wanted to do um, um, a recommendation letter. Of course, it was my first um, um, idea of or on the serious recommendation letters, I can tell you that I, that I spent two full uh, working days on doing this because I had to read a, a, a very um, um, a document with instructions and other things. And then it was for these uh, Canada research shares. And I had this and I said, oh, look at this. What a nice thing. Okay, the letter of reference. Oh, look at this. They say limiting and bias. Okay, so then I, I, I said, that, and they were saying, okay, limiting and conscious biases. They were telling about the, the tricks and things uh, article. And then they were telling how to limit unconscious biases. Of course, I am a gender expert. I was already applying some of those things, but I must confess that even in 2015, myself, I learned something else. For example, the last um, uh, your recommendation, use the nominee's formal title and surname instead of the first name, okay? And that's, you can, you can see that in many, uh, uh, in many, even in politicians, right? That you, you, you call uh, the, the male politician by, uh, by their last name and the, the politician by their um, uh, uh, first name, okay? Um, and this can um, can happen. And uh, but for example, I was, uh, you know, in Spain we are much more informal in that, and it was easy. So I really learned to that. Of course, look at this. How interesting! Try to consider standout adjectives. The idea of trying not to uh, to have this double uh, the this double tracer and all those things. So this was uh, this this example I wanted to say, and and of course this is a very good practice in 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 Canada. Uh, let me also uh, think uh, about the an example of the recognition of privilege, and I think really I would say that um, we really need to do this work. On, on privileges, right? Is recognizing uh, what it is uh, to be privileged. I realized many times that it is very difficult um, um, uh, to, to do this recognition if you have not lived under um, any kind of inequality. And this has happened to me because as a woman, I have always been conscious of not being privileged for many things. But for example, as a white, uh, um, you know, um, university uh, professor um, uh, in in Europe, I I must confess that I also have to think very much about my privileges, right? And and normally this is painful. Okay, this is painful, and sometimes we need to to do. So I have here, and I think it's worthy. Let me maybe we will take a little bit of time, but let me do that. This was something written by Michael's. Kimmel, why men sh should support gender equality. 
Uh, it was it's on on a, an article on 2005, but also he's talking about a seminar during the 90s. Okay, so a seminar on on feminist theory, and and uh, let me read that because I think it's it's really I, I think it has a lot of uh, uh, strength. I often tell a story about a conversation I observed in a feminist theory seminar that I participated in about a decade decade uh, ago. A white woman was explaining how their comox experience of oppression and their patriarchy bound them together as sisters. All women, she explained, had the same experience as women, she said. Black women demurred uh, from quick arrangement. When you wake up in the morning and look, at in the, uh, look in the mirror, she asked the white women, what do you see? I see a woman, responded the white uh, uh, women, hopefully. That's the problem, responded the black woman. I see a black woman. To me, race is visible because it is how I am not privileged in society. Because you are privileged by race, race is invisible to you. It is a luxury, a privilege not to have to think about race every second of your life. And as the only man in the room, all eyes turn to me. When I wake up, and look in the mirror, I confess, I see a human being, the generic person. As a middle-class white man, I have no class, no race, and no gender. I am universally general, generally disabled. I am every man. So I really like this idea that I, I have in, involved there, that is the privilege of privilege, is that the terms of privilege I render in, invisible. And it is a luxury not to have to think about race or class or gender, and only those marginalized by some category understand how powerful that category is when deployed against them. Okay, so that's why I always um, I always appeal to our colleague uh, males to really uh, understand with us all these things on gender. I only think that the only way to really advance in that will be to really involve uh, men in gender equality. And the problem is that normally men do not feel appeal, okay? Are not, do not feel appeal when we are talking about gender equality. Uh, many times we understand that gender equality is uh, just a thing about, you know, women women's issue a women's issue and and of course we can tell i can tell you among gender experts we have very few uh, men uh, of course the all, all of them they are we treat it very well and they have meteoric academic careers in gender <laughs> in gender issues so i would say that um uh, maybe you should consider okay okay so in any case um uh, let me just joke a little bit about this okay so and, and finally just to make um, uh, um, a final um, uh, thing on uh, the importance of making uh, explicit the formal and informal norms by which we operate. Uh, and for example, this happens many times. I have heard many, many times uh, talking about the collective, in, in, in Spanish, right? El colectivo de mujeres, okay? So the collective of women. Have you ever thought about the collective of men i mean it's as you can see this is the norm right it is not the other way you can say okay this is the collective of uh, gay men or the collective of whatever uh, uh, men but not the idea that we are the other group okay this is quite um, I mean, it means uh, a lot, okay? And for example, we discovered that's terrible. I will tell you, you, you do not have uh, teaching, in, uh, but in universities, it is very um, regular that, I mean, of course, when someone is ill or someone has uh, like a maternity leave many times, although it, has, that, it does not have to be the case like that, but it's the idea that all the other colleagues uh, share the uh, that classes, for example, right? And for example, we have um, women telling us in, in, in our universities that the problem is that when they come back from, uh, from maternity leave, they 
they are like they are required to give all the classes that they didn't uh, um, teach when they were in maternity leave. Can you imagine that? I mean, this is a completely, and this of course is an informal norm, right? It's not written anywhere, but it's a practice and it's a practice which segregates really very much. Right? Okay, so let me, uh, you know, all this idea of how we need, uh, we need to, to, um, to have data all the time. We need to, uh, to know where to look for all these uh, gender um, uh, stereotypes and, and unconscious biases and all those things. So here we were in the Supera project and we were thinking of doing a, 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 a research and a survey on uh, academic time usage, okay? We had this hypothesis. Uh, there were some people writing on, on that, this hypothesis that the uh, roles, the gender roles, also apply to, uh, to, for example, to universities. And what they are doing, and, and we will say, I mean, that the hypothesis is that women, uh, female professors are devoting more time to uh, teaching and to attending students and uh, ma ma uh, male uh, academics are spending more time on research on getting money for research and research and in publishing, okay? And we will see because the, the, the okay, the data is there. You can also see in she figures. I mean, still we have a difference in, in, in academic production uh, measure in, this, um, in these terms, okay? So uh, we did this, uh, it, it happened the pandemic, okay? within in the middle and then we decided of course it was not possible to do like a rigorous kind of uh, use uh, usage time um, uh, survey uh, but we could do it on perception okay on perception of times and we so we decided to do this uh, survey on academic conditions academic time usage perception and academic performance during the COVID-19 uh, lockdown we did that at uh, the UCM, at the Complutense University, although we have also done that at the Coimbra University and at the Cagliari uh, University in Sardinia, and uh, all the results are very, very um, similar. Uh, the good thing is that um, we managed to, uh, to not to put into the many times gender into the survey, so we managed some uh, a lot of mail to also respond to the to the survey. As soon as you send a survey or something like that, and you put gender or equality, that the problem is that you do not have so many males uh, responding. But in any case, we did it. We we it was really nice. We had almost twenty five percent of the uh, uh, response, and and we did this. Um, uh, weighted and uh, ponderación, okay, for for having a good uh, external uh, validity. So uh, they are a, a, a strong data. Uh, we have this for the people uh, reading Spanish. Uh, we have uh, already this uh, report on the on the on the study. Uh, you can have it. I mean, there is uh, you have there the uh, where you can uh, find it. But let me just very very quickly because wow, I'm I'm just uh, really out of time. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, very quickly. Uh, here we have only what we found uh, um, statistically different, but we found differences in the computer equipment and in having a, a, a room of your own during the during the lockdowns okay uh, so women and, and normally this is you know for example with kids or whatever if the kids needed the, the computer the laptop for connecting to the school then well, normally it was the, the the mother and not the father giving that um, uh, working conditions. I mean, this was just incredible. There was some data that the psychological impact was going uh, in, 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 is uh, was going um, much more impact uh, on women than in men. And we completely. This was all the items. All the items had a statistically uh, significant um, uh, differences. Uh, women feel more sad, more preoccupied with more anxiety and stress, feeling overwhelmed and losing control. This all, this, this, uh, the, the, the respondents were the, the PDI, okay? So they are, they are the teacher, the professors and faculty, the faculty members at the, at the UCM. 
from all the um, meanings. Of course, we also ask about uh, time use, uh, usage perception. And it is, this is very, very uh, much like the um, domestic time usage uh, surveys that the is, uh, Instituto Nacional de Estadística is doing now, and, and, and they, are doing, they are done in every uh, country. Just a, 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 an issue here. Um, look at the, the only housework uh, where the men uh, put more time was the housework at site home, that during the lockdown, it was a very privileged position being the one going to, the, to do the groceries because it was the only time you can get out of the street. That or if you had a dog right <laughs> in, in Spain so uh, that was um, just when you see and, and that was the only thing and of course you have this is like uh, this uh, it's very similar except for this I mean the, the this has work that you can explain uh, for that okay um, and then we we ask for uh, time usage perception uh, these of course um, uh, everyone I mean, both men and women, they put much more time, okay, uh, during the lockdown. Um, probably this is also explained by the fact that it was not only research, and in our case, it was also changing all the classes to online classes, and that this required a lot of uh, effort. But if you see, the difference is that the women put even more uh, time, okay? So the, the, the differences between before and after uh, were statistically uh, uh, significant, uh, the difference, okay? Um, this is the good thing. We not only ask for um, academic time, but also we ask about the different uh, tasks, academic tasks. There, there are only the things um, that were um, significantly different, okay? Uh, but uh, as you can see, uh, these you have before and during lockdown. I, I will tell you, uh, okay, I will uh, leave you this so you can see and you can see that in the report. But it was really a difference in classes and, and, and exams and in tutoring students uh, and, and writing and publishing uh, the other way around. Okay. This is, uh, of course, this is very, uh, also very uh, characteristic, um, characteristic um, women all uh, punctuating more. Oh, sorry, there's something wrong here. Okay, in any case, um, women uh, really said uh, that they have often worked at, at unusual times. It was uh, often been difficult to work without disruptions. And this is very nice. Oh, this was, uh, it's, they are three, right? And um, it was very interesting because this item on concentrating on work helping me deal with the situation was something that women also uh, contracted uh, more. But this is, the, the, this is the, the, also the difference. That is the idea that men contracted really much more on this item, that I have taken the opportunity to catch up on the late issues because of the pandemic, okay? And then we can see um, uh, here, okay, this was also academic performance and uh, all these uh, different uh, things also uh, were different for women, but I wanted to, uh, to um, show you this. We asked about uh, scientific production before the pandemic, and we asked, of course, it's not comparable because we were asking for the 2019. And then we ask about that. Uh, here, we, we, we ask about how many have used books or chapters or peer review runners uh, sent to published and uh, actually published. And look already, there were significant difference between uh, men and women. Okay, this is, uh, this is uh, the UCM, but as I say, if you go to she figures and everything, you, you will know that it's a general trend, okay? And then, Look at what happened during the pandemic. Oh, sorry. During the pandemic, look at this. There was an over, because these were only about three months, right? So it was almost the same amount of articles, okay? Peer review, uh, working on it. So, so it was like an inflation of, of uh, uh, articles written by both, both uh, uh, male, uh, male and, and female, but much more, relatively more 
uh, for for uh, males. For example, it was very curious. Uh, it was also significantly different. The popular science articles like divulgación, okay, uh, um, divulgación, uh, because it was also a, a, a statistical difference for uh, for men. Okay, so uh, in general, um, what we can uh, say that in general. Uh, female faculty staff uh, have experienced a much harder time during lockdown than their male uh, colleagues. They had worse working conditions. They increased time, uh, both domestic and caring and academic work in, in uh, more. Gender roles con were confirmed and aggravated during lockdown, women teaching and management, and men research and publishing, and this has consequences in academic performance. I just wanted to uh, say that because um, um, I mean I think the the, the 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 most important conclusion here is that it, it was not the COVID nineteen crisis creating these inequalities. It was just, uh, of course, they were aggravated, but they 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 just like put these inequalities in a naked way that we can really uh, you know put it there and think about that. OK, and I think we need to uh, to understand and to think very much about the academic career uh, uh, model that we are embedded in, in and thinking about the sustainability of this uh, model for life. Right. I mean, we, we know we have all this uh, data. We know that, for example, maternity uh, really punished uh, academic women and this doesn't happen with male academics. I mean, paternity does not uh, punish uh, uh, male academics. We really need to ask ourselves why and what it is happening there at, and, and what can we do, okay? Uh, of course, um, I would say with some concluding remarks about the importance of gender studies and knowing about uh, that, the idea that if you have a structural and complex problems, you need structural solutions, okay? Not just uh, things. Uh, but we must continue to uncover where and how inequalities occur and how gender biases and stereotypes uh, operate. We need a continuous collection of data and evidence, which is, is completely, uh, it's, it's really important. We need also to train uh, in gender perspective uh, uh, to teachers, researchers, evaluators and so on and so forth of course you have there i uh, just i had this and and, uh, and i was going to ask if you uh, have uh, had the chance to see the picture of scientist if you haven't please uh, uh see it you know uh, watch it because it's really a uh, very nice and some other uh, things that i think it, they are uh, great and uh, thank you so much. And sorry because it took me a long time. <laughs> I start uh, talking and thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very, very nice talk and uh, uh, for many data and links and video that we can have a look at. And uh, yes, we are, uh, we are late. <laughs> so maybe we can take just one question and then uh, maybe what, what uh, we could do is to uh, to see if uh, someone is more interested, we can continue to, to have a chat and conclude the seminar with one question. So is there any question from someone in the audience? If you know, uh, Jesus? Yes, you, you just uh, unmute yourself and, uh, and ask. Well, uh, I don't mind if, if someone else, well, Lucia has a question. I don't mind um, giving my question to okay. someone else. We passed and we have two. <laughs> I don't think mine one's fast. I want uh, Lucia can go first. <laughs> uh, hi, well, I, I don't know if mine is uh, fast either. Uh, well, thank you for the talk. It was very interesting. I really like that uh, you talk about the recognition of privilege because uh, I'm a Latin American woman. And sometimes uh, I feel like a little ashamed about talking about how hard it is to be a woman in science because I know that for me it was much easier than for a lot of men in Argentina that have a very hard environment. So I think that talking about intersectionality in feminism is very important. 
And uh, sometimes I think that in Europe that is a little bit lost. Uh, but what I wanted to ask is about um, the necessity of having gender perspective in research that, I don't know, for me it's hard to think how this, uh, how you can relate, I don't know, lasers with the gender perspective. But in neuroscience and medicines, I think that is super important. And um, which are the instances or where are the stage in where you have uh, or you can give training in gender perspective? Because I think that this is also important since we always talk about having more women in science, but having more women in science doesn't imply that we are going to have a gender perspective. And I think that uh, the situation with the COVID vaccine is a good example because many of the researchers that were in the media uh, in the develop of the vaccine were women. Nevertheless, now that the 60% of the people has the vaccine, we know that there are some effects in women in the menstrual period that uh, it was not even considered when they do the test. I mean, they never ask the um, volunteers if they have any change in their period. So uh, what I wanted to ask you is, in which places do you think that it would be important to have this training in gender perspective? And if the institutions such as CSIC or I don't know, uh, other European institutions do these kind of things with researchers. Maybe, I don't know if, um, um, maybe Roberta, maybe we can have also the other question. I don't know. I mean, uh, we are supposed to be- Maybe you can uh, ask her to this one and then we take the follow-up. Okay. And there is okay. also one in the chat. So if we try to be fast, we can- Okay, okay. Them. Okay. okay, so thank you so much, Lucia, because you really um, uh, hit the, 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 the important um, um, uh, issue. That is how, how we can, uh, of course, how we can uh, do it and, and how we can um, or where can we get trained. Of course, this is, uh, training is really important. And, and, and I think it's, it's really important because it's a sensitizing and it's um, uh, telling researchers how to, uh, how, to, uh, how to include and how to integrate this gender perspective. As, as you were saying, for many years, it has been understood that including a gender perspective was putting more women in the research teams. Um, and this is not the case. You really have to also to think about uh, how your objectives, your methodology, and, and uh, the impact that you are thinking about, how you are going to implement your project, and everything should be thought uh, from that uh, gender uh, perspective. Uh, but I must say that training is not enough. I mean, training is not a direct, um, it's not a direct uh, measure. I mean, it's not a structural uh, measure. We have, for example, in the Supera, we have... Um, uh, this is a typology of different measures in a gender equality uh, plan. Uh, and we have in one, one three uh, uh, categories. One would be the one on diagnosis and uh, analysis and, and sensitizing, okay, sensitizing um, uh, measures, uh, including um, uh, uh, this is a way be that sorry, the, di the diagnosis and the analysis, then the second one would be the training and the sensitizing, uh, including, and then a, a third one that it would be structural uh, measures and change. And those are the ones uh, devoted to the, to, the, to the institutions. And in many times they should be, I mean, they should be, done under positive actions. Um, I mean, and, you know, it's, it's, it's something that it is recognizing that um, this is not the same. It, it has been 
they are starting now many things no? about, for example, the fallacy of meritocracy. We know this idea of the privileges. We know that this is not completely true, that people, uh, they, they start not from scratch, but from a very different positions. And for some people, this is much more easier than and everything. Of course, we are imbued in this meritocracy in the, in the academic uh, world. And of course, we want to know that when we are we, we have reached a position, it is because our merits, uh, but we should recognize that maybe that, 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 that is, you know, these privileges, that's what I was uh, saying. But of course, uh, the training is absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, important. And it should be made, for example, um, I, what we were um, uh, doing that in the, in the interim evaluation of gender equality for um, uh, Horizon 2020. And for example, understanding and explaining how to integrate gender in good terms in your project proposals, for example. That's that's a good start. And of course, to understand about, I mean, I think, for example, it's absolutely important to have uh, training just before any evaluation panel about anything, <laughs> about unconscious biases and all of those things. And they work. I mean, they work. The problem is that they are, they are not supposed to be, uh, to stay for a long time. So, so it's like every time you are going to be in a panel, in an evaluation panel, you have to receive <laughs> for remembering immediately <laughs> about that. I don't know if I answer, Lucia, I hope. Please, Jesus, unmute yourself and try to be um, short. Uh, I'll try, <laughs> uh, but I don't know if I'll make it. So, okay, thank you for the talk um, because uh, I think it's very interesting. Actually, I was in, uh, I studied in Universidad Complutense and I was in uh, many gender <laughs> circles and formations that uh, you, you organized uh, over there. Um, and something that I, that I saw, uh, a, an assumption that is quite standard in, the, um, in let's say, what was taught uh, in uh, gender equality is uh, the assumption that distributions of males and females uh, should be 50-50. So, um, okay, so everything I want to say here, I just want to clarify that um, this is my doubt. I'm not certain about any of this. I'm just trying to contrast some evidence that uh, some people have suggested. And so please don't, don't take me too seriously. Um, okay, so what I have, well, the, the argument that I've stumbled upon is that uh, in as it happens in many species, but it's also seen in personality traits here in humans, um, males have the tendency to show a high probability of extremes um, in, in, many, in many different things, but, but also, for example, in a, a disagreeableness or competitiveness, uh, which is, for example, something quite relevant when trying to access a high power, well, or let's say uh, executive, um, positions in uh, businesses or enterprises, uh, which makes all the sense. I mean, those positions are selected upon having a strong competitive uh, character. Um, for example, we have uh, the other distributions, which are, for example, in healthcare, where women are much more uh, prevalent in, you know, well, let's say in, the, in many other places. So, um, as I say, I don't know if this is correct or not, but I am worried about, well, you know, shouldn't this be researched more? Shouldn't we um, maybe, of course, the components of social, cultural, and uh, let's say that the gender culture that we have built is, and prejudice. I mean, of course, this is, this is not going against that uh, people are prejudiced and, you know, have a bad understanding. But uh, I am curious about this, as in, you know, uh, is the distribution, does it have to be 50-50 everywhere? Or, you know, maybe there is something in us uh, which, which maybe drives us uh, to other kinds of distributions. So that is my question. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Jesus, for your uh, for your your question, and and I completely understand your 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 concern about, especially the distribution, um, and, and also because 
what we have very difficult in the in academic terms is uh, what I said interaction between uh, vertical segregation and horizontal uh, segregation. So I mean, it is, it is uh, to a certain extent it is quite normal that in physics uh, you are more male than uh, um, than female because they are also you you have been even fewer. Uh, you know the women have been fewer in in in. In, in, in the studies. But of course, all these, the glass ceiling, um, all these um, uh, indexes and indicators that we have, of course, they have the, into account uh, this. Of course, this is not, this is not um, free uh, from any kind of, of uh, cultural and social and political uh, interpretation. Never, uh, it is the case um, uh, because I mean um, we can also ask ourselves which kind of society we we wish, right? We we would like, and uh, and maybe even I think it's very interesting to think about this uh, biological kind of um, uh, possible implications um, about how to. And even to try to explain what gender stereotypes were uh, like that. Uh, but what it is true is that uh, these essentialistic ideas of how women and men um, uh, uh, behave, uh, these are the ones which construct uh, gender stereotypes and biases that are not objective at all. Okay. Uh, so because you have that, that maybe they are important in a certain way, but they work really very much into constructing those uh, gender stereotypes that maybe you would like to, uh, to you know, to, to, and, to, you know, to question yourself uh, if that is what the society you would like. I mean, I think that's also the uh, uh, quite important to to uh, decide, but um, that this is like a ball rolling, and uh, those essentialisms, okay, uh, really pay pay a high price uh, for segregating women, and of course about what you were saying about the distribution of females, that's the reason why I was putting this scissors kind of uh, uh, graph, because that the, the problem is that it, it, it is just inverted, right? So um, that's what, uh, do, we, do we want that? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, of course I do not want, I, I want the, 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 the women to have uh, the same. I mean, it, I think it's a matter of justice. It's a matter of uh, human rights also, and uh, not only a matter of biology. That, of course, for sure, the, there are some uh, issues there than, uh, that that are uh, um, influencing, but probably they should not influence that much. <laughs> okay, and most of the other things uh, are. Um, are more uh, socially and politically constructed, and and I and I can also end like with the same example I, I started with. I mean the idea of the airbags, and this was serious. There were a lot of people dying because they, it was not good science, right? Because not taking into account the idea of not only the sex analysis in the dummies, but also the gender analysis and who is normally going into a, to certain uh, things. It's something, so even if we can see that the weight, I, I mean, it was important, the sex analysis, but it was extremely important, the gender one. And those are socially and politically constructed. I don't know if I, if I have uh, fed enough your, your question, but I, 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 I think it's really interesting to think about that, but Ah, okay, let me think about what what we, which kind of uh, uh, society we we would like uh, to have. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your question. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, I think we have really to to stop because it's probably been the longest seminar <laughs> in the last years. So I I would like just to thank you. And um, and we will keep in contact. We will probably ask you some advice in future.
Okay. Yes, uh, sure. Thank you so much. I will send you the, the presentation now for you to okay for for you to share with the uh, people. And uh, thank you so much. You were I, I couldn't see your faces, but I I I I, I felt you right that you were there. So <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Thank you. Okay.